What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how you can get started using Move AI to do your own motion capture. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, the very first thing that you want to be aware of is you want to make sure, no matter if you're only using two iPhones or you're using six, you want to make sure that all your iOS devices are on the same version of iOS. And same thing goes for the Move AI app. You want to make sure that everything is working cohesive with each other on the same versions. In which, in my particular case, I'm using four iPhone 11s and I'm using my iPad Pro as such. And so my iPad Pro is going to be my host unit and the four iPhone 11s are going to be the devices that I'm going to be hooking up to my tripod to capture the volume. And if we actually go into the Move AI documentation, it's going to show you no matter if you're using two iPhones or using three, four, five, or six, or if you're capturing two to three people, it's going to give you a field guide on how to set up your cameras and everything. So if I scroll down here on the website, you can see that there's a volume calculator right here. Now it's gonna say number of people. For this example, we'll just say one number of iPhones. Actually, let me scroll down to show what it looks like with just a two camera setup. So if you have only two iPhones, you wanna make sure that they're just in front of your character right there. But if you have three, you can actually have one capture from behind. And of course, the more iPhones you have to capture your volume, the better, especially if you're gonna be capturing multiple people. But in my case, I have it at four iPhones and this is gonna be the setup. So it's showing it in like a square pattern in which that's gonna be ideal. But in my case, I was shooting in my living room and it's more of like a rectangular space. And so what I did was I separated as much as possible. So it always had my person inside each camera at all times. And that way it's easily able to capture all my movements as I'm moving around in my space. But if you look at the optimal volume right here, it's gonna say a minimum of two meters is always gonna be ideal no matter what. And then a maximum of six meters in which my living room's no we're near six meters and so i was able to just expand it out just experiment a little bit depending on your situation of where you're shooting at but as long as your person is always in the field of view you're going to get good results and as i was saying before i'm using iphone 11s which will allow me to shoot in smaller spaces because of the field of view on the camera on this version up if you're shooting with like iphone 8 9 or 10 you're going to have a smaller lens field of view and so keep that in mind so if you're using like iphone 8 you're probably going to have to separate your volume a little Little bit further so that your person is always going to be in view of all your cameras at all times and it's always good to have measuring tape on hand as well just so you make sure that you're hitting that minimum threshold and you're not having it too close so that your volume is going to be an optimal space for you to record in but the next step from here like i was saying i was shooting in my living room and so i had to get creative i took an actual wooden board put it on my couch so that i was able to put my tripod up on there just so i could have it as far back in the corner as possible and then i just started placing my tripods all around the living room until I got into an optimal space that I was able to shoot myself. But before I started placing my iPhones up on my tripod, what I did was using my iPad, I made that my host unit. And then you just type in your different coordinates in here. Like I have mine as the living room setup session one. And then you wanna start connecting all your iPhones into your host. And so what you're gonna do using the Move AI app on your phone, you're just gonna click use as camera. You don't even have to sign in. You just wanna make sure that you have your iPad or whatever you're using as your host device properly set up so that everything else is going to work in tandem with it. And so from there, what you want to make sure is your camera is actually facing in the bottom. Now it's going to say it on the screen there, but this is important. If you have it flipped the other way, it's not going to recognize it. So you want to make sure that you have it in this position before you put it on your tripod and you'll see the screen pop up and everything to show you the field of view of your camera. So what you're going to do for however many iPhones that you have, you're going to set each one of those up individually and just as a tip something that I came up with is I was working with this system here like I have my red iPhone right here which is very identifiable because it's the only red one that I have and so I made sure to set this one up first and connect it so it's going to be my camera one so I always knew that whenever I looked at my red iPhone that was going to be the very first camera in my setup and I kind of used this one as the hero camera so anytime I did any type of motion capture and I wanted to be facing in a particular area I always made sure that I faced this particular area and this is going to be like my main camera and everything else was just going to be filling in the gap so no matter if you have like a piece of tape or you have a different color iphone
iPhone, make sure you always know which is camera one because for me, it was important when I was doing calibration to always start at camera one whenever I start to calibrate. And as you can see right now on my table, you see each one of the iPhones are numbered one, two, three, and four. Now this is very important. Whenever you're setting up an iPhone, like these are refurb iPhones that I got off a website here. And when I was setting them up, the first thing I did was cloned it from my iPad, but that was a mistake because when you make a clone of the phone and you go to set it up on Move AI, it's gonna look at each iPhone as identical. And so when I initially did my setup, it showed each camera as being number one. And if you try to capture a volume with all the cameras saying number one, it's not gonna capture anything at all. And it's just gonna confuse the system. So so a way to get around that is whenever you're setting up a fresh iPhone, you want to set it up manually and then you're not going to run into that problem because each iPhone is going to have its own identity. And then your setup should look exactly how it is right here with each one being named individually one through four. So now that we have our iPad and our iPhones all properly set up and working with each other, the next step from here is just putting it onto our tripods. And so I put each one on individually, just in order, one, two, three, four. And I made sure as I'm looking at my iPad that I'm in view at all times. And so maybe you wanna set up all your iPhones first and then you just wanna hold your iPad or your iPhone, whatever your host is. And you wanna make sure that as you're walking around your room, you're always able to see yourself. And so that might take a little bit of adjustment. And I also use some markers down as well. So as I have like these little blocks there, I'm just placing them down when I'm coming to the edge of my volume. And that way, when I'm doing calibration or even motion capture, I know not to go past these blocks because that's gonna take me outside of the field of view for that particular camera. And so once we have all of our cameras set up, we have all of our markers down and everything, the next thing from here is we're gonna record a calibration. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna clap three times above your head. Now I did a slow clap, I didn't do one, two, three. I did it slow because I wanted to be able to give my system enough time to register each clap. And I'm gonna show you why this is gonna be important later on. But after you do your clap, then you're gonna hold up into a Y position. You're just gonna move around your volume in a natural movement, looking at each camera as you're walking around your room. And then what I like to do is I come back to camera one, I like to just hold in a Y position just for a few seconds. And then I'll end the calibration on my host iPad. And then the next step from here is in the lower right hand corner where you see new scene, you wanna click on that. And then you're just gonna type in whatever you're capturing right here. And then you're gonna go and hit record. And before you actually jump into your T pose, again, you wanna do three slow claps above your head because later on, whenever we're capturing a volume, it's gonna ask you where does the first clap start and the last clap end. And then you wanna jump into a T pose. And I'm gonna show you guys all this here in a moment, but you jump into a T pose just for a couple of seconds. And then you just start capturing away whatever your movements are, whether you're walking, you're kicking a ball around, etc., etc. And once you're done with your capture, you're gonna go back to your host unit here. You're just gonna hit that record button again to stop everything and then from here you're able to actually upload your session or if you want to capture another session same thing go down to the lower right hand corner hit new session and then you just repeat all the steps all over again so once you're done with all your recording and all your takes you're going to hit finish session down there in the lower left hand corner and that's going to bring you to this next screen which is going to show you all your different phones that you're going to be actually uploading all the data from so this is gonna have progress bar for each one of the phones. You don't wanna to touch any of your phones or anything in your setup. You just wanna let everything naturally upload to your system. And then once it's done, we can actually move to the Move AI website. And this is where we can start pulling out our captures. So where you're gonna to wanna to go from here is move.ai and you're gonna to wanna to log in. And then this is the page that you're gonna see once you're logged in. Now, if we look down here at the bottom, you can see all the different sessions that we recorded. You're gonna have your name of your project and then your session number, however you labeled it. And for this example, I'm just gonna to go to my living room solo session one, and it's gonna actually show you the amount of cameras that you use too, which is really cool. It shows you your camera models and your environment. So this is all really cool information, but I'm gonna click on this one right here. And then this is gonna bring us to our session overview in which let me show you how we do everything from scratch. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to set up is your calibration here. You're just gonna hit plus calibration. And then you're gonna look for your video files down here. And you wanna look for the one that says calibration. Now, if I click on this, you're gonna see a video pop up down here. And you can actually see each one of our cameras is correlated up here as well. So if you click on camera two, it's going to show you from camera two, three, four, etc. But I'm going to go back to camera one because remember, this is my hero camera that I'm always going to be looking at. 
and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click the play button and I want to write some information down here. Now you can either write this down on a notepad, but I'm just going to do it in a text document here on my computer. And so what my text document opened right here, what I'm going to do is actually just play this and I'm going to be looking at the time code. Now, the first thing I want to do is see when I have my first clap, which is going to be right there. So around seven seconds, let me play that again. Okay, so actually it's gonna be at six seconds. So I'm gonna pull back open my notepad and I'm just gonna hit six and then a dash. And then let me see when the last clap is gonna hit. So about nine seconds is when the last one hit. So I'm just gonna hit nine. And then I'm actually gonna look at the time code for when I start my calibration. So let's say we start at around 11, somewhere around there. So I'm just gonna mark on my notepad 11. And then I'm gonna hit play here again. And let me just move it towards the end. Somewhere around, and let's say it ends around 44 seconds. So around there. So this is gonna be my hand clap right here. It starts at six seconds, ends at nine seconds. And then my calibration starts at 11 and ends at 44. Now, what I'm gonna do now is come down here and click save. And then it's gonna say confirm selected videos. And this is just going to be from each one of my iPhones here. So just make sure the name and convention correlates with each other. I'm going to hit confirm. And then right here for my title, I'm just going to name this one calibration take two because I already did one before. And then here under actor profile, I already made an actor profile for myself, which is Winbush, but you could create a new one here as well. But it says 1.82 because this is in meters in which I'm about six foot. So all I did was like a Google translator and it was able to coordinate that for me. But down here under actor name, Winbush, of course, then it's going to ask you your height in meters in which I just did the calculations there on Google. And then right here where it says calibration auto sync videos, I'm just going to type zero minutes, six seconds like so, because that was the first clap. And then the last one was at zero minutes and nine seconds like so. And that was the last clap there. And then right down here where it says calibrate process entire video. I don't want to click that on because I don't need to calibrate this first part up top. So I'm going to still do it at zero minutes, 11 seconds, and then zero minutes, 44 seconds. And then I'm going to come down here to save and run. And I'm just going to let this calculate out. And so you can see it's going to bring us back to the website. It says run launch successful. And you can see the status percentage right here in which I'm not going to wait for this because I already did my calibration before. So I'm going to move on to my takes down here in which this is going to be everything that we recorded in our volume. But before I do that, we can actually scroll down here to session videos. And if you want to look at any particular video on any of our cameras, you just come down here. Let's say I want to do the finger tracking take. You can just click on that and then you can actually just play through the video if you would like. And this is just everything that was captured from that phone right there, which is really cool. But if you actually want to make this motion capture data, we're going to come up here to takes and I'm just going to click on plus take. And then let's say I want to do walk. So I'm just going to click on walk right here. And then I'm going to play close attention down here. Same thing I did before. I'm going to calculate my claps and I'm going to calculate when I did my session. So I'm just going to click play. Let's move this forward a little bit. Let's see when I want to do my first clap. Okay. So around five, let's see when I did my last clap. So that's going to be about eight. And then let's say 13 is when I start my process there. And I'm just walking around my living room like so. And I can actually scroll this back to the end to see where I finish off at, which is going to be about 52. So once you have your numbers written down and everything, I'm just going to click on save. I'm going to confirm all my selected videos like so. Hit confirm. And then right here, I'm going to hit create new scene. And I'm just going to name this one walk two because I already did the walk one before, but I'm just doing this as an example for you guys. And so for my title, I'm just going to do walk underscore take two number of actors. Now, if I have multiple actors in here, you can actually select more in here if you want, but I'm just going to select one. And for a prop type, this is going to be right now. We only have a football in which that's just going to be like a regular round ball. And if you watched my previous video, I actually did a take where I was kicking a basketball around my living room and everything so make sure you watch that video if you want to see the results with that but for this one i'm going to hit prop type none because i'm just walking around solo and then right here where it says auto sync videos first clap we're going to do zero minutes and then seconds we're going to do five and then my last clap was zero minutes seconds will be eight 
and then my action start time zero minutes and then my seconds is going to be and then my seconds are going to be 13 for my end time zero minutes and 52 seconds and then i'm going to come down here and it's going to tell you total cost of credits and how many credits you have left i'm just going to click on save here and now this is going to start processing everything out now this is going to bring us to this next screen which this is going to be very important so where it says calibration i'm actually going to do my first one because i think the second one is probably still calculating and then right here where it says fingers i'm going to do fingers on because i want to track my fingers as well and then right here where it says rig i got the best results when i use the actual move rig down here which move underscore mo that's going to be for like a male figure in which you'll see the example right here and then if you have a female figure that you did the calibration with that's going to be the move underscore v so i'm going to do move underscore mo but we have a whole plethora of other stuff in here but again i got the best results when i just used the move ai one right here and then down here under formats i'm just going to do a basic fbx and then i'm going to click on run down here and then it's going to calculate everything for us and so on this next screen you can actually terminate the run if you want which i'm probably going to do but you can see down here our status is at zero percent you just want to leave this window open until you're totally done but i'm going to show you what the end result actually looks like so i'm going to terminate this run because i already have this one captured and i'm going to come back over here to sessions and i'm going to come down here to where i have my first walk right here and if i click on this this is what it's going to look like when it's done so your status will have this green check mark down here you can actually come over here to download or you can preview your results if you want so if you click on preview results it's going to show you inside your camera one and it's going to show you your rig moving around as well which is really really cool but let me actually click this off i'm going to come over here to download and show you guys these options here so we have a couple of different options here we have fbx in which if you're going to be using anything like unreal cinema 4d iclone you want to probably use this one this is preview target but if you use some blender you can actually download a blender file same thing with maya and then we have some additional files down here as well in which this is where you can actually download the video preview that we just watched but like i said you're probably going to want to download this one this is preview target right there and there you go you'll have your fbx data that you can bring into any 3d application that you're using but remember how i said that we can actually track props as well in which i did a take where i'm kicking a ball around so let me show you what it looks like whenever you have that extra data in there so i'm going to come back down here to takes and i'm going to actually click this one this is kickball and then i'm going to come down here to download and then you can see we have our previous options where it said pre-retarget, retargeted, but we have this extra one here. This is FBX prop. Now the FBX prop is going to be the motion capture just for the ball by itself. So what you're going to want to do is download that one separately from your pre-retargeted one right here. And if you go to Blender, you'll actually get a Blender prop as well. But if you want to see what those results look like, you can just click on this eye right here. And this is actually really cool. So there's the ball right there that I captured. And you can just see it it's actually kicking around and it's tracking really well like i didn't even think about it like i have the hardware floor right there and the basketball which is pretty similar in color and it was still able to pick it up pretty well there so next time i do something like this i'll probably get a ball that's a little bit more contrast with my wood floor there or maybe even take this down to a basketball court and film down there where i have a lot more contrast but i would say for the setup that i'm shooting in right here this is really, really cool results right here, and I'm really impressed. So that was my setup and all the steps that I took to get moving with Move AI. If you want to see how to bring the motion capture data into like iClone or Cinema 4D, make sure you leave me a comment down below. But from here, it's basically just taking your FBX data and putting it into your DCC of choice to get moving. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how your results are coming now that this is public, where people can actually use it. And until next time, stay fresh. Keep creating, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.